So starting with the intro to COE, uh, I start off with Dango Pistol uh, for the offhand blinds against the elemental projectiles, but right, I also equip Smokescreen for something we'll be able to see in a second. I quickly jump up towards him, and that huge spread of ice projectiles is completely gone. Doesn't even exist at that point. Uh, that also happens with the reflections from Guardian Walls and from uh, Temporal Curtain and some other things by Mesmers and a couple of other projectile stops. Uh, I think that's the, really the only way a thief can get it. I don't know if Daggerstorm deflects it efficiently enough, but that's how you do that part. So for this next fight against the wolves, I actually switch out the uh, offhand pistol and put offhand dagger on and switch to my blind on stealth trait. Uh, I use this because uh, I prefer the dancing dagger skill to slow the wolves down for anyone who's struggling and they back off quickly to not get hit by the wolves. Um, those wolves get crippled so efficiently because their well, their every single attack is completely dependent on them being within an inch of someone. And yes, that person standing right there, it took that wolf an age to reach him. That thief was in absolutely no trouble whatsoever. I mean, even if they're at full health, it's just nice to be able to root enemies in that way. And the blind on stealth trait obviously keeps them completely uh, inefficient while you're around them. And this Colossus is... Uh, not Colossus, sorry, uh, Goliath. Is no problem for anyone ever, so that's no worry at all. And naturally everyone skips this wall for some reason, so I just left that. Now we're coming up to the fight against Subject Alpha in Path 1. This is one of the easiest parts of any dungeon in the game, if I'm honest with you. So here I equip Bastix Venom, uh, Basilisk Venom, sorry, and immediately incapacitate him and then rush in, but of course, knowing my luck, he gets pushed away from me. And considering he has no crystallization at this stage, I just dodge all of his stuff and wail on him with the dagger. Um, I I can't check at this point, but I do have the blind on stealth trait for the minions, because they're generally pain in the ass. Uh, if there weren't any minions, I would use the condition removal on stealth, uh, just to get rid of those burns so I wouldn't have to dodge so much, I could just withdraw the heals. But it looks like I'm using the condition removal here, uh, but to be honest, either is viable. The minions are absolutely worthless against a five-man team. If I was soloing this, I would definitely be using the blind and dodging the fire, but you can pretty much use whatever method you want uh, for this fight, so extremely easy, and it's actually quite easy to see his routine in any fight. Uh, he only has two attacks, and he rotates them on such a regular basis that he's one of the most predictable enemies in the game, so I don't actually see how anyone actually has trouble with this boss, if I'm blatantly honest with you. Moving up to the golems here, uh, everyone uses the same tactic of stacking up at this corner, so I opted to use the sword-pistol combination with the blind field and the AoE damage with the sword and pistol whip to incapacitate various uh, types of golem which seem dangerous at any point in time, but to be honest none of them are really dangerous at all. Um, again, extremely easy if everyone follows the same tactic, everyone knows what they're doing. And uh, yeah, I mean sword-pistol is generally one of the best combinations. Uh, and this kind of shows that off, really. You can just see the ridiculous amount of damage mitigation from the blinds, and at the same time, uh, the lovely, lovely AoE damage that Pistol Whip gives. So there's that. Easy peasy. One little trick I like to do with this uh, laser puzzle is uh, something that makes it seem completely and utterly trivial. <laughs> I've seen so many people have, much, have loads of trouble with this puzzle, so... Well, it's not a puzzle, but, you know, just a little obstacle course. Just turn your camera this way. This solves all of your problems. You can see exactly where your feet are. And, well, that's it. It's just like a game of Mario at that point. So jump up and jump away. Simple, really. Just a little change of perspective can make that a complete and utter walk in the park. So there's that. Extremely easy and a tip for any profession who does that. Now for this fight against the champion golem, I don't... Uh, know this Mesmer very well, so I don't know if uh, he or she is going to be using the boon removal aspects uh, to make this fight easier. So I've planted a smoke screen in front of the protection uh, turret uh, to completely mitigate that boon from him uh, while I destroy it, and then I carry on with sword and dagger. So if any boons are left over, I have the capacity to remove them almost instantly without a problem. Uh, and the protection turret is up again. So, just as my smoke screen goes off cooldown, I will be able to get rid of it. But I actually noticed that the Mesmer has uh, started getting rid of those boons, so it's not much of a problem anymore. 
I don't know why that person carries on destroying them, because the boons are not a worry anymore, but that is essentially how I operate this part. Uh, if I do know that there's a competent Mesmer here, he'll just remove all the boons without a worry. Then I'll probably use Dagger Dagger, because if I use uh, the stealth uh, giving myself a generation trait, the number three in Shadow Arts, then um, any retaliation that gets through can be mitigated. Uh, but I can also use the poison from the auto attack to stop any regeneration that gets through being as effective. And Dagger also has very nice damage from backstab and spamming Heartseeker uh, towards the end of his life. So if I knew the Mesmer was going to be extremely effective uh, before we came in, then I would be using Dagger Dagger. But in general, I would use Sword and Dagger for that part. So that's that. Easy. Despite all I say about disliking Sword and Pistol, I end up using it quite often. Um, so here I use it simply for the AoE damage against all the golems, but also because of Headshot and Black Powder against uh, some of the Assault and Battle variations of the golems. I've also kept Smokescreen here for, hopefully, uh, a noticeable example you'll be able to see in a second. That was obviously a complete brain fart on my part, I forgot the golems explode. Uh, but, um, but yeah, of course, yes the obvious lovely AoE damage the pistol it gives. Now hopefully this will be a... Ah, the support golem here. This is almost completely non-existent now. You can just headshot him into oblivion with your initiative regeneration without a worry in the world. He will never be able to get his fire shield up. I know some people like to use the sword dagger stun variation, but with this I just prefer... Uh, having the black powder, etc. available too. And uh, yeah, it's just so easy. There's no positioning required because he likes to turn around and look at me for some reason, even though I'm stealthed. Uh, like all channeled abilities follow you in stealth too, so the headshot is just easier to perform uh, over and over again in rapid succession compared to the days against that one particular mob anyway. So yeah, we have Pistol Whip doing its usual business, taking this golem out. And most groups will then use the 1-4 method, which is exactly what we do here. And uh, that's it, no more golems to worry about. But if there were, then I would use the exact same tactic yet again. Uh, again, slightly monotonous, but gets the job done, easy peasy. So for this variation of Subject Alpha, the second part in the path, uh, I decide to have a sword main hand for emergency condition removal, should I need it, but also to escape the crystals, uh, as per usual, obvious uh, precautions to take against this boss in any path. Uh, but I have the pistol offhand, uh, simply because Pistol Whip is, uh, well, because it has such prominent evades built in, uh, I can usually just evade the fire while actively attacking him. So there really is nothing to worry about for the majority of the fight whatsoever, except for when he crystallizes me. And even if my uh, infiltrator's strike is um, not active for some reason, I can just shadow step out. And uh, that's that. Oh, a little pro tip as well, you just saw it there, is those enemies do drop loot if you have the capacity to attack them before they die in the split second that they're hostile. So just do that quickly. Pistol Whip is good for that because of the built-in evades. So I'm not sure what I took. I think I just left the deception cool down there. I didn't actually see that. But, uh, you know, these fights are pretty much all the same, to be honest with you. Basilisk Venom equipped as always. The Thieves Guild lasts a nanosecond against the fire, so I just never bother with it. And Daggerstorm is pointless. And most of the other elites at this point are also pointless. So Basilisk Venom just to temporarily incapacitate him is always a good thing. And this follows the same pattern up until his death. This part, however, is where Sword and Dagger is one of the most prominent weapon sets uh, for, well, for anything really, simply because of the Sigil of Paralyzation, which d makes this weapon set insanely powerful. Um, I didn't have time to see you there when I was just looking, but I would have usually put on the two initiative on stealth for this part because it's very easy to just sponge the damage he deals. He's not very strong, uh, so there's nothing to worry about in terms of dodging or blinding. Um, so I just have the extra initiative management and then completely drive him into the ground with non-stop chain dazes. Uh, there are little gaps uh, where rhythm can be broken by the extra second revealed after the patch. Uh, but overall, it's rather sustainable. You attack with the three parts of the chain, and then one more attack, and then you cloak and dagger, and generally you will always uh, go into stealth on a constant rotation. 
And as you can see, the daze is insanely powerful and incapacitates him for such long periods of time if you're able to consistently maintain it. Um, you know, if anyone else at all in your group is using any form of CC, uh, you can keep him CC'd until his death from 100% to zero. You can have him consistently um, CC'd and he will never be able to get his buff back. But of course, those are rather rare uh, group setups uh, because not many people would rather have prefer CCing, they just all DPS his face off, which is fine, but I just like being a little bit extra in terms of usefulness. This daze is absolutely ridiculous, and if you don't have the Sigil of Paralyzation in your sword, get it now. That is the only reason you should get it, just for that, because it's just so freaking awesome. Now, yet again, against uh, the final Subject Alpha, just do the exact same thing as you did on the second encounter with Sword and Pistol and with the Pistol Whips and with the breaking out the crystals when necessary, etc, etc, etc. No problem whatsoever, you can get this over and done with. Probably without even getting hit once if you're paying him too, if you're paying loads of attention, but uh, to be honest, this fight is so monotonous, I usually get hit by the fire every once in a while. So yeah, not a worry whatsoever. Moving on to path two. Now this part isn't a problem for anyone. Uh, this is where it branches off for path two and three, by the way. I've skipped pretty much uh, most of it. Um, I just switched to Dagger Dagger, uh, so I can easily uh, lob multiple uh, foes at once with Dancing Dagger, but also for the rather powerful Cloak and Dagger and Backstab. And for the Blind on Stealth, I also have against the Big Golems. And if I had remembered, I would have used Smokescreen and planted it in front uh, of the Laser Cannon, so that the Assault Golems with the Delayed Blasts, the big ice things, uh, they wouldn't be able to hit it. So if I remember that, I would have equipped it on the third slot. But as it stands, I have Signet of Agility on for this particular version uh, of the run. So, pretty much no problem for anyone. This goes the way it always does. No problem whatsoever. Coming up this slope to the uh, loads of adds here, I just equip an offhand pistol quickly, uh, dodge out of the way of those guys, and then just dagger storm the crap out of everything in the room for free loot. Don't even know why this is in the video, but it's always fun to see the big numbers go everywhere. Uh, but the main reason I have this clip is just for how I fight these guys up here. Before I rush in against the Berserkers, I get an area weakness combo off against them, then go to Dagger Pistol. So I can quickly blind and incapacitate with headshot uh, against these guys. These guys just seem to love smacking you in the face over and over and over without ever stopping and the spin attack can usually catch you off guard so when they activate that stupid little spin uh, being some berserker warrior wannabe uh, I just spam headshot and no problem whatsoever they're completely incapacitated and their main burst is gone so that's them out of the way and the undead wraith is never a problem for anyone especially when you're blinding the crap out of them repeatedly so yeah easy now with this version of Alpha, I've decided uh, to stick with a uh, sword pistol uh, for the pistol whip evades uh, against the fire. This isn't a problem on path 3, but out of habit I usually stick with pistol whip anyway. And uh, if Basilisk Venom had been available to me, I would have switched to it, but since we all rushed ahead I stuck with uh, the Dangerstorm that was still there at this point. Um, but this pretty much goes the same way as Path 1, except for the ice, where you periodically dodge, and no problems whatsoever. Um, something I probably forgot to mention is that I sometimes have Signet use here, which supplements my pistol whips at the same time as getting rid of any burns that get through during, during the evade routine. Uh, so, there's that. But also, because of the stealing given that initiative, you know, I pretty much never ever run out of initiative to use pistol whip with uh, against these versions of Alpha, so... This is pretty much the easiest part of the game, period. Now for this fight, I have all the condition removal traits available to me, and I usually just use cloak and dagger to get rid of conditions, but uh, since all I ever do is fire the rifle, I usually have shadow step on Q to remove the poisons, uh, and hide in shadows to get rid of those damaging conditions at the same time. Uh, but sometimes I'll cloak and dagger a vine if those are on cooldown, Apart from that, this is just the standard shoot the golems at the boss. No biggie. Uh, something that people should take into account here is when to shoot these golems, because I've seen too many times people just look at those golems and as soon as they spawn they fire at it and it never gets there in time 
and starts chasing them around the room. So what you should be paying attention to uh, is where they stop, because they will crawl out of uh, the room where they spawn, Don't those little corner rooms, and then they'll momentarily stop if they have no one to aggro. Because if they have no one to aggro, you'll be able to see the distance uh, on one of the next ones that spawns, I believe. Uh, so just be a little patient and watch where they run. If you can see that golem I've targeted, it stopped next to the vine and then just did nothing after that. You wait until the point where that happens. Uh, my guildie there's got, got that covered, you see? Uh, you wait until they r run just out of the range of that room and then fire and they should go straight within the range and explode uh, without any issues. You see, that's what I mean. There's the example that if they don't get there in time, uh, then they just chase you around and that's a pain in the bum. But generally, that's how you do it. Easy peasy. And now to the final encounter. Which is, yet again, another pistol whip spree and doesn't really need any further explanation. The more I explain, the more time is wasted for the rest of the guide. Quite simply, do it the exact same thing as you've always been doing, with a little bit more dodges against the ice. And that's it. Easy peasy. Now branching off into path three, uh, the main deviation is this part against the specimen, or whatever you're meant to be calling it. Yeah, there's various different names. Um, but I run Sword and Dagger for this part because the Cloak and Dagger uh, skill, along with the condition removal on stealth, means that the burns are usually never any problem at all. I mean, they usually aren't at all anyway, uh, but sometimes they can get a little bit ahead of you. Uh, especially when I used to do, uh, run this part uh, solo with three people firing their cannons above me. I would just sit next to him and just smack him over and over by myself. And the condition removal on stealth uh, helped immensely in sustaining myself. Uh, because sometimes the infiltrator's uh, strike and shadow return just wasn't enough uh, to get rid of the burn over time. So it was just nice to have that little extra security. But apart from that, it's just the same pattern as always. And now the final subject alpha, you can use any weapon combination uh, you want really, if your team is capable of destroying crystals, which they usually are. Um, sometimes I'll just run dagger dagger for this part to be honest, uh, because there are absolutely no burns to worry about, no, no condition damage to concern yourself with, unless you get hit with the ice, which you shouldn't, uh, because it's so easy to dodge, uh, and if you're staying close you'll never get hit by the earth spikes anyway. And if you do, it'll be marginal damage, because you'll get hit by one small insignificant part of that uh, chain uh, of AoE circles. So there's nothing to worry about ever. You can use absolutely anything you want. I just have Sword and Pistol here out of force of habit, because of all the other paths where I encounter Subject Delta and use Sword and Pistol. So that's that. Uh, if I weren't using Sword and Pistol, I'd probably use Sword and Dagger. Or Dagger. Dagger. Or perhaps both at once. To have the ability to break out should something go catastrophically wrong and all my teammates die and I'm forced to solo it. Um, but yeah, same as always. And that's it. That's COE in a nutshell. Extremely easy uh, if your team is competent anyway. And uh, I suppose that you, now you can see the flexibility, like uh, my constant changing out of stuff to offer different things as I'm going around with it, but this is only one dungeon. Next up will be Fractals. Uh, that'll be probably a much longer video. Um, but apart from Fractals, I think I will do Honor of the Waves and any other dungeons you can request, uh, because those are the only main ones that I run and I don't have much incentive to do the rest. Uh, so requests are perfectly fine. So see you in the next dungeon video. Ciao!